Well, if I told you we are between Elsinore and Alberta, would you guess where we are at this moment? And if you said uh, right in the heart of Baldwin County between Mobile and Pensacola, you'd be exactly right. And specifically, we're here at uh, Mary Shelter Gulf Coast, a phenomenal uh, maternity home for pregnant uh, women who have found themselves in a desperate uh, spot in life that needs help. Well, Mary's Shelter is a place for them. And we're going to be talking with uh, Kay Traddles, the executive director, plus Mary Ann, a, a program director, and some of the girls who have been so helped uh, by this ministry and just so, uh, so pleased that something like this exists uh, for uh, ladies uh, that they serve. So anyhow, you're going to hear about that. Uh, definitely. Plus, uh, we're going to have Sheila White in the studio, my friend. She's the Director of Engagement for Lifeline Children's Services, and they are an orphan outreach to equip the body of Christ to uh, lend aid to vulnerable children. And so you want to hear all that Lifeline is about. Plus, we're going to take you to a, a little posh banquet we had at the Pensacola Country Club where the Christian Women's Connection Ministry took place. Highlights from that all is ahead on this special Coast Up Close. I'm so pleased to be with uh, my new friend, the executive director of Mary's Shelter Gulf Coast, Kay Traddles. And uh, Kay, you're um, just involved with a wonderful, needed mission in our area. Uh, describe to our, our viewers, please, what uh, Mary's Shelter is all about. Absolutely. Uh, Mary's Shelter is a home for homeless pregnant women. It is a place for them to come. They receive all of the prenatal, postnatal care, but we're more than just a home where they have their baby. We are an entire program. Our goal and the goal of our board and our mission is to change their lives, which changes the lives of their babies and changes generations to come. It was chaos um, in and out of different programs and institu institutions. Uh, being on the street, I was on drugs. I was in an abusive situation um, there were drugs involved. I mean, I've OD'd multiple times before and it was only a matter of time before it would happen again. I knew I had to get out of that situation. Um, so God answered my prayers and put Mary Shelter in my life. We only asked two questions. Are you homeless and are you pregnant? And if the answer is yes, we go get them wherever they are or we bring them in to us. And it's because of this that we actually have residents from all over the South. It's not just a local uh, group of ladies that we have. It was scary walking in at first. Um, you know, it was a, it's a big place and you know, lots of moms and kids. The feeling when I first came in the door, I knew I was where I belonged. Everyone was very warm and I mean, they welcomed me with open arms and it, it was a different feel from anywhere I've been before. I just, I knew I was gonna be able to go somewhere with this. The case manager meets with them, and that's one of the things that we express to these young ladies, is we open our home to you, we open our hearts to you, but when you get here, they have to each be willing to put in what it takes to actually go through the program and profoundly change their lives, because that's what we're trying to do. And, you know, we have an open door policy. Um, we have residents who it's just not for them. And they come in and say, no, I can't do this. But we also have residents who say, no, I can't do this. And they go away. And two months later, they come back and say, you know what, I'm ready now. And when they're ready, it is such a beautiful thing to see it happen. My role as a resident advisor at Mary's Shelter, um, it's a lot of hats. 
Um, sometimes we're, you know, big sisters. Sometimes we're aunts. Sometimes we're fill-in part-time moms for the residents themselves and for the, the children that their moms are having. Um, we are mentors. We help them learn to cook. We are a little bit of everything around here to these women. We are bringing them in as part of our family and creating a family for them. I've been here three, going on four months now, and it has been truly the, the biggest blessing that I could have ever received. Like God truly answered, He came through. He answered my prayers with that. And um, you know, I have money saved up and I'm already looking for a vehicle. And you know, so it's, it's been amazing. Um, so I didn't really see a future for myself before coming here. Um, after coming here, I, I mean, I've got everything ahead of me. I mean, I'm 21 and I know I've got forever. Like I'm looking to the future, like I'm gonna be doing this, this and this. Like I'm gonna have a better job. I'm gonna have my own vehicle. Like I'm gonna be able to do what I gotta do for me and my kid. And I I'm gonna be a good mom. Like I, I know that's in my future is being a good mom. Coming in with a paper bag and so hopeless and not knowing what they're going to do and where they've, where they've been and not knowing where they're going and don't know how they're going to get, you know, make it to another day and then 9, 10, 11, 12 months later you see them they've got their own vehicle and they've got a job and they've got money saved and they've got a happy child and they're happy and everything's just they have a goal and they have a purpose and they're driven. That that alone right there just makes that that gives me more drive and, and fills me with so much to know that I helped and encouraged her and held her hand along the way. Now I have hope. I have um, a child that's, you know, I'm gonna have my child and I'm gonna have a beautiful family and you know, God has just he's shown his mercy. He's really shown his mercy and his kindness, his goodness, and, and he shines it through this place. Through Miss Kay and the staff and our case manager, I mean, they took in somebody who was broken and they've showed them love and how to, you know, be a person and, you know, done some amazing, amazing work inside. One of our biggest ways of raising money is to actually speak in churches and really spread our mission. And, and that's multifaceted because a lot of times when people are in trouble, they go to their local church and say, I need help. Well, I want all, all the local churches to know Mary Shelter exists, number one, but also to be able to, to share our mission and you know a ask the, the people to help us financially by speaking in the churches. Yeah. So that's a, the way we really raise money. Well, that's excellent, uh, Kay. And I'll just ask you uh, to consider uh, telling your pastor about Mary's uh, shelter here and inviting uh, Kay to be a, a speaker and just share uh, the vision of the great uh, story of what happens here at Mary's Shelter Gulf Coast. We're right over here in Baldwin County, just centrally located in the area between Mobile and Pensacola, Mary's Shelter, Gulf Coast dot org. Org. Correct. Yes, there's the website right there. Uh, check out, learn more about Mary's Shelter and just the wonderful mission, this faith based organization. You know, um, uh, Kay and her uh, staff are not just, um, you know, saying that they're pro life, obviously, but they are demonstrating their heart. I think the heart of the Father provides such a support uh, for pregnant girls that have gotten themselves into through bad choices, of course, but yet, hey, God is there, merciful, and now there's a place that they can come uh, to provide, to have a refuge, and not just a refuge, but a source of help and a future hope that can be built through Mary's shelter. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me on and for coming out to our home and meeting everyone. These women and, and children become part of our families for years. Once they come in and they do the work, and really put their minds to it. It's what I always tell 
the girls will, from the very first moment we get a phone call, if, if you want us to be here, we'll be in your labs forever. We're, we're a family once you come through those doors. And sometimes, just like with every family, you may not get along all the time, but we're family. We, we love one another for sure. I'm grateful for this place. I, I really am. Um, it, it's not all sunshine and rainbows, but that's just life. <laughs> and uh, it, it takes some adjusting, but it's well, well worth it. it I wouldn't change it for nothing. I just want to thank Mary Shelter for opening their doors to me and changing my life and being, you know, the blessing that it has because now I will get to have my child and, you know, just thank you. Thank you for all that you do. Got pregnant with Miracle, and when I got pregnant with Miracle, you know, family problems start going through, and I started finding about things, and then I got pregnant again, and then I had my son. There was a party, a mutual interest party, and I went there and had a good time and met this one, went on a couple of dates, and uh, the rest is history. It was some time after that that we found out that I was pregnant. My story um, begins when I was born. My birth mother decided that she was going to place me for adoption. I was placed in the home that I grew up in at three months old. It was Christmas. To be honest, I kind of had a picture-perfect family, I guess, growing up in a lot of ways. When I was 16 years old, I got pregnant, and I guess that's one of those things that you don't ever think is going to happen to you. I certainly wasn't prepared for it. James 127 makes it clear that the believer is to care for the orphan child and the vulnerable child. Well, there's a wonderful Christian organization, Lifeline Children Services, that does just that. I'm so pleased to have on the set the director of engagement for Lifeline, my friend Sheila White. Sheila, welcome. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> it's so good to um, have you here and, uh, and talk about this wonderful mission that you're involved with. Thank so you. let's just talk about uh, Lifeline in terms of its just basic mission. Okay, well, um, Lifeline Children's Services is um, an orphan care ministry, and our mission is to equip the body of Christ, Christ to manifest the gospel to vulnerable children. Wow, that's, a, that's an awesome <laughs> mission statement. Yeah. All right, so care for the orphan child. Now, how does that mm -hmm. practically work out? So you are supporting families that have taken in uh, orphan children. We do, okay. um, but it first starts with women that are facing unplanned pregnancies. I was hardcore not wanting a kid and I never wanted to get pregnant ever. I remember when I took that test and I saw the pregnancy, the two lines come up, I just fell to my knees, I just started sobbing. So we provide free pregnancy counseling to those women, and we also provide services to families that are interested in adoption, whether it be international or domestic. But we also have several ministries that are about family restoration and family preservation as well. Okay, wow. wow. Yeah. So you involve both in, in foster care and in, with adoption mm -hmm. services? We, we are. In, wow. um, in many of the states that we're involved in, we actually yeah. do foster parent training, and we, we provide um, support to them through that arena. But yeah. um, here in the Gulf Coast, we mm -hmm. provide training for foster parents in the form of um, monthly training because okay. they have to maintain their license we provide that training for them monthly okay. that they can get for free. Sure. And that's a wonderful thing about Lifeline is that all of our resources are free. 
that is amazing. Yeah, it that is. is. Amazing. Yeah. So that is, yeah, that is such a great mission that um, you know to provide hope for a for a, a person that's you know, in a family that's has an unplanned pregnancy. Yes. And what an alternative they can either you know for a, a orphan or adoption. Right. Yeah. That's, that is really good. So uh, are there different facilities in the Gulf Coast region? There are. We have um, three locations here. We have okay. one in Mobile at, okay. um, it was actually in Daphne, sure. at Three Circle Church in Daphne. We have okay. one at Covenant Church in Mobile. And then we have one located here in uh, Pensacola at First City Church. Wow, wow, yeah. okay. That is so good. Now you are the uh, director of engagement. Yeah, that sounds yeah, yes. let's engage. Right. Uh, so what does that what does that mean? What are you uh, engaging? With well, getting the church equipped to to help provide um, you know service to the to mm -hmm. these vulnerable children? That's exactly right. Is that um, my job is to um, share the resources that we have at Lifeline with um, staff um, and even lay people in the community in the community and at the churches to okay. share with them what um, services we have to help them support and come alongside foster and adoptive parents in their congregation and so you know everybody can play a part in that no matter yeah. if it's providing a meal for a foster family prayer yeah. um, it can be something that's um, we call it low-hanging fruit yeah. um, that they can do yeah. that way or they we can um, provide resources to help them be the best foster and adoptive parent that they can. Yeah. We also have um, a parenting coach program where families, and they don't necessarily have to be in the foster care or adoption okay. um, ministry. It can just be yeah. um, parents that are having a difficult yeah. time parenting. I mean, okay. our kids don't come with a parenting manual, right? Yeah. And so um, parenting can be very difficult. So mm -hmm. parenting coaches are there for you to pick up the phone and say, hey, I've tried yeah. everything. I'm at my wit's end. What can I do now? Yeah. And um, okay. and so that's, that's an awesome, awesome ministry that, that Lifeline is. offers as well. Sheila, what would you say to the folks that are obviously have a heart to want to be a part of the Father's heart, which is certainly to care you know, for the orphans and, right. the, and the vulnerable. Yeah, it's very clear, undeniable, that yeah. as believers, that should be one of our mantles and be involved yeah. in this somehow. But would say, you know, uh, taking, uh, being an orphaned parents, that's a kind of a permanent thing, or at least many years, yeah. typically. Yes. What would, what would be a step sort of underneath that monster or that big commitment? Uh, 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 adoption, I mean, or what, what some other levels of engagement, so to speak? Yeah, well, um, one of the ministries that we have that we're really excited about is Families Count. Families Count is a second chance for mamas and daddies. Really, it's twofold. It's an opportunity for moms and dads who are at risk for losing custody of their kids or who have lost custody and are working towards reunification with their children to hear the truth from God's word about who they were created to be. But then it is also a vehicle for engagement for the church. Families Count is a, is a biblically based, gospel-centered um, parenting curriculum. And so it really gives churches an opportunity to uh, have a reason and, and have a forum to get into relationship with hurting families, to provide some services that they, that they desperately need, and, and really to teach them from, from a biblical perspective uh, what family is. Families are being restored and redeemed, you know, just how the Lord he loves and cares for us sure. that way. And so um, so that's what Families Count is all about. Children can participate in the Families Count ministry as well. Okay. So while their parents are going through the parenting class, they can be in another room and we have a curriculum for those children as well. And so yeah. we're just feeding them and, um, and just showing them who they are in the Lord as well. And yeah. so they're um, that curriculum kind of goes hand in hand with okay. what their parents are learning that um, night as well. 
Yeah. And so we just finished our first class at First City Church last night. We had graduation. Okay. And um, and one, during the six weeks, one of the moms was able to go and get her eight-month-old baby back from the foster care system. Wow. And so how exciting is that? And that's yeah. what it's all about. Yes. And um, and not only you know does she have her child returned to her, but now she has a church family that's around her, supporting her, loving her. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's not just the class. It's not like the curriculum is like this magic elixir that just fixes things. It's the fact that there's a, there are, there's a whole system of things that the church is bringing around these families. So by the church bringing people in, by them building relationships with them, by them creating mentoring relationships, by them you know meeting transportation needs and food needs, but mostly by them just bringing them into the life and work of the church and, and building healthy relationships with them. Many of these pr protective factors kind of are, are raising up in, their, in their, their lives just because the church is being the church. That's what it's about right there. Absolutely. That's what absolutely. the church should be doing, not let, turn it over to the government. Right. You know, yeah, yeah. that's great. So let's just get uh, more churches engaged in yes, this process, absolutely. right? Yes, absolutely. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So how does, do they just contact you, um, a church, you know, maybe um, you're on staff or you know someone on staff at your church would say, hey, we need to be involved with what Lifeline is doing. Absolutely. So, so what do they do? How do they reach you? Yeah, they can call um, my cell phone number is 770-241-5470 or they can contact us by email and they can just um, Google Lifeline Children's Services. Well, that is great. Well, I tell you what, I just love how the, you know, it, it's uh, not just a subtle gospel involvement, but you all, like Lifeline or yeah. the gospel and the word of God is, is front and center in your in your mission, isn't absolutely, it? Absolutely, absolutely, front and center. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> and that's where the real change comes to. It does. Getting, uh, moms and uh, and dads and children all yes. part of the family of the Lord. Yeah, yes. uh, that's great. Yeah, Shannon. we're so thankful that uh, the Lifeline is here in the Gulf Coast to have it in Mobile, uh, Baldwin County, and in Escambia County here in, uh, in yeah. Florida. So it's covered covers the coast very well. It does. Yeah. Yes. So. Uh, Absolutely. Well, check out lifelinechildrensservices.org. You can contact Sheila directly. Uh, that number is still right there on your screen, and she would love to, to talk, talk to the church staff there where you are and see how Lifeline can be a part of your congregation and being a part of the Father's heart of taking care of the orphan and the vulnerable children in our area. Amen. Sheila, bless you. Thank, Thank you, Thank you David. so much. That's good. <laughs> Each and every step that I went through, I can tell you he was right behind me all the way. Well, we're here at the Pensacola Country Club tonight to enjoy an event for Pensacola Christian Women's Connection. And we're looking forward to having a great evening. We're going to honor our military. Uh, we have a gentleman who retired from the military who's going to speak to us and uh, uh, a lot of other fun. There'll be music and there'll be good food and we'll enjoy each other's com company at the tables. So I'm what's called the uh, welcome chairman which I get to meet all these nice people that come and uh, get them seated with their friends or find them a new friend to sit with. So we just uh, have a good time, I have a wonderful speaker who speaks about 20 minutes um, to us and encourages, encourages us and uh, talks about things in his or her life that we all can identify with and, and uh, especially how Jesus came into their life and uh, has changed their lives. We don't talk about denominations. We don't talk about politics. <laughs> we just have a good time together for about an hour or two hours. We're affiliated with Stonecroft, which is a worldwide organization 
And it's interesting, a lot of military wives know about it because they've gone to luncheons or dinners in Japan right. or Germany or wherever they've been stationed. Yeah. And Stonecrop has been around for over 75 years. Now, uh, the Pensacola Christian Women's Connection has been meeting in Pensacola for well over 40 years. Oh, wow. And, and I got involved uh, in Stonecrop and got into my first Bible study and got saved. And um, it was wonderful. And Dave wasn't quite there yet. But we kept praying for him. And then the next February, so February of 1990, we okay. had the dinner up in New Jersey. And Dave attended that and was so touched by what the speaker had shared and the presentation of the gospel that he was saved. Being a good husband, you know, she invited me and I went. And I wasn't thinking about getting saved, but the presentation opened my eyes and it touched my heart. And um, I realized at that time that what is described in the Bible is true, it's God's Word. And this is, I mean, I knew of God, but I didn't know Him. So what it did was it opened my eyes that, well, if this is true, then, then I can't wait. So I need to accept Jesus as my Savior. And so that started my journey. We, the, the idea is for us to invite unsaved people who are going to hear the gospel that may never come to church with us, never come to a Bible study, but they might come to the Pensacola Country yeah. Club yeah. for the program. I finally got to a point where I found myself getting up and wondering, is this all there is? The parties, the travel, all of that stuff that I thought was so great. And it just wasn't doing it for me. What I didn't realize is that later on, after I committed myself to Christ, which is a story in and of itself, um, I found out that there were Christians that knew me and were praying for me. So whoever comes to me, I will in no wise cast him out. That means if you got a big track record of darkness behind you in your life, something you never really settled, where you don't have that, that real connection with him. He takes care of that. I don't care what you've done. If you saw the list of my sins, you'd probably look at me and say, impossible. So we have no dues, uh, no membership fees, uh, anything like that. You just make a reservation and come. We're providing a way for Christian women not only to have a, a just a wonderful event to come to and hang out with their friends and all, right. but something that they can invite an unsaved friend knowing that that person is going to hear the gospel. Well, we're going to have to close out this great Coast Up Close program from the road less traveled here in Baldwin County. Uh, specifically, we're at Mary's Shelter Gulf Coast, a phenomenal maternity home uh, serving a great need to uh, ladies that are pregnant and found themselves homeless. Uh, and so they are a great, great resource for them. And a 15 month minimum, uh, you can stay even longer if needed uh, here at Mary's Shelter. And so we definitely wanna uh, invite you to support them, certainly pray uh, for the transformation that's happening to these girls, to these young families, uh, and certainly for the staff. Uh, for wisdom and favor with them as well. And so Kay Treadles, uh, you are doing a great work with all of your team. Plus Sheila White with Lifeline Children's Services. What a great mission that is as well. And so we were just, uh, just having a great highlight program here on Coast Up Close. And we'll see you right back here somewhere along the Gulf Coast having a good time in him. <laughs>